Greatness. Greatness. Bow, bow, bow. Greatness. There are two times to be great when you feel like it and when you don't. Welcome to the Renewing the Mind podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Sanchez. Joined with me today is a special guest for the first time ever on the Renewing the Mind podcast. First guest we've ever had, born in Jasper, Georgia, has a bachelor's degree in child development and family science from NDSU, worked as a waitress, daycare worker, ran her in-home daycare, a daycare director, has three sons, a daughter, a daughter-in-law. She's the Mimi to my beautiful daughters, currently the office manager of RTM. She puts her family first. She's selfless, kind, loving. She can't tell a lie. She also can't keep a secret. She's always praying, sensitive to the Holy Spirit, and listens to the voice of God. My mama. What's up, mom? I'm up. <laughs> <laughs> it's when you do something weird, like dad always kisses his ring. Yeah, I or he don't does do a that. dumb. He says this cheesy quote. Yeah, that's your dad. Do you have a cheesy quote? Or I don't. You want to do the ring kiss? No. <laughs> in honor of dad? I don't. <laughs> You could do it for him. Rip. On this podcast, we flip your mindset by talking through our three pillars, renew your perspective, move towards uncertainty, and find what's awesome about that in every situation. If you missed last week's podcast, you can head over to any platform you listen to podcasts on or head over to YouTube and watch the video version of this podcast. We talked about how to win relationships. Dad broke down the IDK method, intent, positive intent in all situations, Darts, don't throw darts in night, be a knight in shining armor, which that applies to any relationship you can be in. We have a, a segment that we like to call a what moment. Now you do go wah, wah, wah. I was good. I said I wouldn't do that. Yeah, but do that wah, 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 wah. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Uh, I got the what moment this week. So my what moment, what's awesome about that is last week I took a trip to El Salvador for my video company, LXI. And uh, just to think over about a year and a half ago, we started that company and to now to think that we had opportunity to head to El Salvador to do some videos, to help a missionary, to raise some money and funds is pretty full circle from, you know, filming the very first marriage conference that we did on an iPad. Um, and and then, hearing that the Lord told your dad that you were the media person. Yeah, for we don't need to necessarily mind. have to give and dad that the credit. And that was kind of why you started it. Yeah, we don't have to do that. We can just say like, you know, God's done some crazy things over the last couple of years to be able to do that. And so going from an iPad to now having, you know, a pretty nice camera is pretty amazing and awesome about uh, what that looks like. And now we have, you know, three cameras set up and we have a guest speaker today. You excited? Sure. Yes. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. So today we're talking about who we are part two. Oh, yeah. We're titling this mom side of the story. You're going to make sure that whatever dad said on his side, we're going to, we're checking it. We're fact checking these things. Because sometimes there's discrepancy between the <laughs> right, two. <laughs> right. Yes. Let's get into it. Okay. Mama side, I got a question for you to start okay. us off, to set the record straight. Who's your favorite child? <laughs> Funny. <laughs> so let's go on. It's the time. Next question. It's time. Next question. Let's tell them. Next question. Okay. That means she doesn't want to answer it because it's me. So, no, for real, set the record straight. Dad in episode one said that you chased him. You wouldn't leave him alone. That you were the one that pursued him. True or false? And explain it. False. I knew he it. He chased me. We knew it. I was actually dating someone. Whoa. And He's a home wrecker. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> And so no, he chased me. Bad dude. He used to follow me in and out of math class and step on my heels, and so my shoe would come off. And every day, every day. That's like preschool flirting. That's yeah. like punching. Yeah, you. yeah. And then they would call. We had teen lines, so a teen line and your house line. And my sisters used to not be very fond of him and his friends because they would call the teen line. They'd say I wasn't here or home, and then within seconds the home line would ring. And it would be them. To double check. To double check. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So he chased you he chased, in a creepy way. He chased me. Yeah. He's kind of like a stalker. Oh, nah. Yeah. Nah. You hesitated, which means yes. <laughs> no. All right. So how did you meet dad? He had a best friend, Jack. 
And so they were good friends. And then I had a good friend, Mindy. And Mindy and Jack were good friends. So we went to um, Hoover. They went to Woodrow. And so just between Mindy and Jack, um, that was, I met. That was in middle school? Um, yes. Okay. I met dad. So and one time they snuck over. I'll tell you a funny story. Yes, let's hear this. They snuck over. Yeah, we to, need the juicy stuff. Yeah, they snuck over to Mindy's house and we were all out on the um, trampoline late at night. And your dad's always had muscles, even when he was younger. That, that's false again. And, <laughs> and so his it. friend kept saying, which I'm sure they prepared ahead of time, show us your muscles. Come on, show them your muscles. <laughs> no way. Yes. The courtiest. Yeah, I, that yeah. feel cringy. Yeah. So did he just flex for you? I don't know if he ever did, but that's what I yes. remember. That's what I remember of the sneaking out night. <laughs> oh, wow. That is awesome. So the muscles got you or what? <laughs> okay. What's your first thoughts on dad? My first thoughts, thoughts on dad. He's awesome. Not not now. I'm saying back oh. then. Um, I think probably a little your bit. first impressions. My first impressions, probably a little bit. Um. I mean, awesome. Obviously, he was good looking and stuff. But once again, he, he was not necessarily. Proven. He was totally different than me in every area, and so that was a little bit. I don't want to say scary, but just a little <laughs> bit of a difference and in going into the unknown, uncertainty. I moved toward Shout uncertainty. Out to Frozen. Woo-hoo. Oh, so yeah, oh, yeah, pillar. Yeah. I thought you were going yeah. Frozen. No, you know, no, no. no. Moved toward uncertainty because yeah, yeah, yeah. it was um, different lifestyle, different everything than what I ever experienced. The opposite kind of attracted you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when we started dating, like very right into yeah, the dating, dating, he told me some wild stories made up about his family just to see if I would leave or not. Oh, well, you can't just drop some bombs like that. Yeah, Start, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how did you start dating? He asked me to homecoming our sophomore year. Well, you still had a boyfriend or you didn't have a boyfriend? I, well, as soon as he basically asked me, then I called. Tell that story. Okay. So on the phone, on the teen line. Okay. You know, in my you bedroom. Dad are talking. Yeah. Yes. Okay. He asked me to go to homecoming. And so then I proceeded later that night to call my boyfriend and break up with him. And I'd, what? I've been dating this kid for two years. <laughs> oh, why? <laughs> so you were dating a kid. Dad asked you to homecoming. Yes. You broke up with the kid to say yes to dad. Yes. And literally, wow. we started dating September 5th of 1986, and we, we never When was did, homecoming? It was like a week or two later. So you like dating quick. Yeah, yeah. And we never broke up. We literally, once we, you know, sometimes you have fights and you break up and you don't date for- Well, you had a kid. So to was... stop. Two or three weeks, and then, um, but we never did that. Once we said yes, that was it. Wild. Oh. All right. So you guys start dating, then- then <laughs> stop. You know what I'm saying? I'm here. <laughs> then he asked me to, we went to homecoming, dated, and then in April was twerp. Gotcha. That was where the girls asked the guys to the dance. Okay. And we went to twerp and yeah. Then. Yes. Some while longer, you found out you were pregnant. Yes. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I, and that was very unusual because I was like probably... What should be considered a goody two-shoes. I didn't cuss. I didn't say heck. I didn't say darn. I didn't party. I didn't drink. I told my mom everything. If a boy kissed me, you know, for, for the, you know, yeah. most part, I told her anything I did wrong. So that was probably very um, weird to people to hear that Stacy was pregnant. Yeah. So describe your home life a little bit. Two parents. Two parents. Um, two sisters just raised uh, born again Christian um, early, right away. And um, di- couldn't listen to any other music but Christian music. Wasn't supposed to go to dances, but my mom always let us. <laughs> and so just, they were strict, but they weren't strict in that um, since we couldn't do anything. Yeah. But a different lifestyle than dad's home life that we've heard about. Very different lifestyle than dad's. Multiple mm-hmm. stepdads. Yes, and abusive yes. And none of that was. Total there. different lifestyle than what I was raised. Church Sunday and Wednesday. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday, anytime the doors opened, we were there. You were there. We would go to church on Sunday, go to Orange Julius, work all day long, literally have to close and get to church. Okay. So then you become pregnant. Yes, I'm pregnant. What was your initial thoughts on being pregnant and just walk us through that mind game that happened or that the mental thoughts that mm-hmm. happened? Well, I didn't believe it because 
really one time and it can happen. And um, so I just, I didn't quite, wasn't really for sure that I was pregnant. Um, but obviously the signs, the main sign was there. And so we had to. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> we, me. No, the main sign's me. No, that's not the main sign. Yeah. When you're not, when you all of a sudden miss something and you I know, gotcha. maybe mm -hmm. you're probably pregnant. Gotcha. And, um, so all the signs pointed to pregnancy. Yes, yes, yes. Body started changing, realized this is. Right. This and, is real. Right. Uh, what was you and dad's first conversations when. You found out you're pregnant. What did that look like? Well, things were different back then. You didn't run to Walmart and buy a pregnancy test. You didn't go to the Dollar Tree and have a dollar pregnancy test. So, and if you did, we didn't know it. We were kids, and so it was like, what? How do we know that we're pregnant? You just can't do that. So we knew we had to go to back then. You went to Planned Parenthood, and so we it was like, how how do we get out of school? How do we not tell our parents? And so I. Um, I acted like I was sick. My mom stayed home and worked at home, but there was a few weeks she worked down at the um, the beauty school, Siouxland, wherever that, be the beauty school now, it was called something different, and her friend ran it. And so she needed her to fill in for two weeks, so my mom wasn't home. So I just um, told my mom I was sick. She called me out. That wouldn't work for Raul. His mom just didn't do that because he obviously was a little bit wilder child than me. So his older sister called us called in like his Nana? Mom. Yeah, Nana. Oh my Nana word. called in and acted like she was his mom and got him out of school. And so we went to Planned Parenthood. And that was quite the experience. Well, we went there and they had a checklist of all the symptoms that maybe you're experiencing if you're pregnant. And I literally thought, I'm not pregnant. I mean, I don't have really any of these symptoms, but one. And so we went in, we took the test, and I just remember sitting there and the lady coming in and she said, it's positive. She's like, how do you feel about that? And I just sat there. <laughs> and then she kept asking me, I'll never, ever forget that line. How do you feel about that? And she kept, and I just wanted to scream and say, I'm 16. How do you think I feel right. about this? <laughs> so we found out we were, you know, Raul came in, um, they talked to us a little bit. We left and we went, um, obviously, to the car and just proceeded to cry. And then my mom was at home, so we went back to my house and just that reality that I was pregnant and that was so far was from in your tum tum. Yeah, yeah. It was like it was hard. That night was hard, and and you, even though you don't believe, we had to start thinking of all the options. What are we going to do? How are we going to do it? What's going to happen? Ro moved to Texas with his aunt. I moved to Georgia with my friend. Um, we didn't believe in abortion whatsoever, but when you are faced with that, you do contemplate it. It's like crazy, but you contemplate it. Even though I knew deep down, I wouldn't follow through with it. It's something we had to contemplate and go to, I mean, back then you really didn't go to high school. So our initial thoughts were, I wouldn't go to high school. Uh, I think I knew one other girl that was pregnant at high school. So just what do you do? How are we telling our parents? All that. So did you, what was it? Some decisions? Did you make any decisions at that moment or? Not, no, not really. Do yeah. we put the baby up for adoption? All those things go in, through your mind. That was a hard one because I, I never had really any career. <laughs> I wasn't had a career goals or anything. I just really wanted to be married and a mom. So that thought was a little bit, not that it wasn't the, a good the, option. The idea of going down the it, path of adoption. Yeah, it wasn't not that it wasn't a good option. Sure. Um, it just wasn't for you. It was I just don't think I could have done that. And oh, and the other, well, that's later on. My parents thought, well, maybe they could raise you. All right, we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll get. Yeah. So, how did you tell your parents? Okay, so that that night, um, my mom was downstairs cleaning because the my night you went to Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm, yes. Cried all. Okay. Yeah. So I went. Um, she was downstairs cleaning for my sister to come home from college. And I was in my bed and I was crying. Um, and at one point, I think in the night, um, before I told her, I think, or after, I remember I was, we had those walk-in closets and I was in my, don't ask me how I got there or why I was there, but I was underneath my clothes in a fetal position crying and um, just how am I pregnant? What do I do? And just... I don't know if I've ever in my life gone back to that kind of spot where you're fetal, balled up, bawling position. Mm -hmm. And so I just I'll always remember that. But I was somehow, I was back in my bed and I was crying and my mom came in and she hopped in bed with me. And 
it had to have been the Holy Spirit because I have no clue. Like I said, I was a goody two shoes. It wasn't like I was partying and running around, getting grounded, none of that. Right. And my mom just looked at me and said, Are you pregnant? She just knew. She just knew. Sorry. <laughs> I think it's been so long ago that it's like, why does it bring so emotions? Yeah. That it's just crazy. So then she knew she had to tell dad, and dad was upstairs. Dad. My dad. Your papa. And um, she didn't know how she was going to do it, but he was on the throne is what they call. He was going to the bathroom. That's, that's called pooping. <laughs> yes, taking yes, a dump. Yeah. And so she thought, oh, this is a great time to tell him because he's he's in the Daisy middle. Poops his pants. He's, he's in the middle. The he can't jump up. He can't do anything, which is so funny to me. I was thinking this the other day. He wasn't a he wasn't kind of a aggressive, violent or like man. A run away person. No, yeah. he wasn't even anyone he wasn't like that. So right. it was kind of funny that she thought that. But anyway, so she proceeded to tell him that I was pregnant. And <laughs> And obviously he did not jump up or go crazy. And he, I don't know how long it took, but he eventually came down and I was still in bed crying. And he just basically said, you know what? It'll be okay. We will figure it out. We'll work through it and let's pray. <laughs> and he proceeded to pray. That was and the initial, that was the same night. Same night. Same night he came down. I am I think mom told him pretty quickly. Wow. And so he came down and then we just prayed and... If I remember correctly, they actually went and got Raul, your dad, didn't have his license because <laughs> remember he was a wild kid because <laughs> he had had a wreck without his license when he was driving. You know, you picked good ones. Yes, and so <laughs> so he couldn't drive over, and so um, my dad went and picked him up and brought him over. How long is this night? Like it was, it was the longest it's night a in the long world. night. Well, it's probably dad worked from home. Sure, mom yeah, was at home. Not, so yeah. yeah, it probably was late afternoon. Late afternoon into the. So evening. he came yeah. over and he came and ate dinner and um, we talked. So that so let's break this all down. Planned Parenthood, find out you're pregnant. Yes. You go home. Mama knows. Yes. Mama's your mom. Yes. Then Mama goes and tells Papa. My dad. <laughs> All these dictates. Yes, yes. Mama tells Papa. Yes. Mama and Papa come down. Yeah. You guys talk about it. We you pray. pray. Yes. Then Mama and Papa go get dad because he yes. can't drive. Yes. And you all come over for family dinner. Yeah. And I'm there as well. Okay. Right. Yeah. You're there as well. Which is funny because you'd think my parents would have been upset. Definitely. I, we assume going into it, my parents would be upset and Raul's mom would not be. Just, Just because it was more familiar, in yeah, their more family. familiar in their family of having um, children out of wedlock and teen pregnancy and stuff, and it was just the opposite. Um, he did, waited like I think maybe even a whole week before he told his mom, and then when he told his mom, she was very mad, very mad. Um, do you know why or what? Do you yeah, because he she was afraid. He was um, very athletic, um, football star, had a great future, probably. Well, he at that time they thought with going to college, which she did, and play football and yep. all those things, and she just thought saw that go out the window. He was done. Like he was the one to break the yep. cycle, and yep. now he's now he's yeah now he's that. right back where everyone else is. Um, so she took a probably three or four days, but she eventually actually did come around, and they both loved us unconditionally. And her name is Bomb 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 Linda. Yep. yep. So we got Mama yep. Papa yep. Bomb Bomb. Yep. And we so, have to put show notes at the bottom of right, the names right. of Nana. Yeah. But she she came around too. She was um, great too and sure. loved us through it. It just that initial. Yeah. You know. Which I think that's probably where ninety percent of parents would probably be is. You know, thinking back if my kids right now came, well, not right now at four years old, but right. when they're in high school came and told me that they're pregnant, I don't think, I hope I would respond that way. But initially, I don't know if, the, man, the the love and the compassion for a set of parents to say, we love you, we'll get through this, let's pray, right. and then let's drive across town to get the dude who knocked you up who can't right. drive right? because he's a bad dude. He's not and a bad dude. I mean, he was just you know, wilder. Yeah, he was a bad guy. He was not. Yeah, you like bad guys. Stop. He was a bad dude. Uh, pick him up, bring him over, and let's have family dinner. Right. And I think that goes... I think I would want to punch dad if I was Paul Paul. I think it goes to um, the relationship <laughs> with Christ because obviously we were lived in a Christian home, and at that time... Um, Rose family, they attended church Easter and Christmas, but they didn't have an ongoing relationship with Christ at that point. 
I mean, obviously, you know, they do now and serve the Lord, but at that point they did not. So that was a kind of a blatant example of maybe the love of Christ living in your life versus yep. um, not and how you handle situations. I mean, what were some of those initial conversations after that night, you know, moving forward with Papa, Mama, right. Bum Bum, yep. you and Dad? Well, it's what do you do? Do you go to school? Do you drop out? Like I said, it wasn't known to go to school when there you were pregnant. There wasn't teen pregnancies that also continued in school. And you paved the way. I paid, well, at North. There was one other girl that I knew that had, was pregnant. Um, so we were sitting around the table. My mom is a coffee girl. And so her friends, and if you know Fran or Mama, yes, this is her, her, her mugs. Well, actually mine, but she had some too. And um, she, we were sitting around having coffee and her friend Cindy, who also would substitute at North High and everything, other uh, high schools. We were sitting around talking. I probably about, what are we going to do? How are we going to handle this? And I just remember Cindy said, well, why does she have to drop out? Why does she have to stop going to high school? Why yeah. can't she go? And that was our first like, oh, aha moment. Like, oh, yeah. I guess I could still go to school. Yep. And um, that's how we decided that we were going to go to school. Um, the adoption piece. Wait, hold on. So let's walk through that. So you're walking around your junior year of high school. Oh, wait, wait. First, let's go okay, back okay, because we're okay. then we, the conversations before, what are we going to do with you? Yep. I mean, am I having this baby? I mean, am I putting up for adoption? Are we keeping it? Yep. So a few things that kind of were running around our minds was um, my parents had a couple that were a little bit older and um, were not able to have kids, They uh, kids, and so um, the idea, they thought, well, actually, I think they approached them and said they would do this, that they would um, adopt you, and um, so that was an option. The other option would be that I would have the you, and then mom, mom, papa would raise you as theirs. And so mom, mom, papa would be mom and dad. Yes, yes, and I just, neither one of those. And you'd be sister. Yeah. And so you had to, I had to play those out in my mind and how would that look now? Mm -hmm. How would that look when I'm older and married and with kids? And like I said, my goal was to be a mom and a wife. And so that didn't line up with me. Not that there were bad options, not sure. that there were wrong options. Just for me, that wasn't something I knew I could live with. Yep. So we ultimately came to the decision that I would go to high school um, and then I would have you and um, raise you as my marriage, not marriage, stay together. At that point, we, right, that point, I think we were just thinking, how do we survive being pregnant at North High? Gotcha. I don't know just that marriage was. Yep. I mean, we obviously loved each other very much, but I don't know that that was even a thought or talk right then. So you're a junior walking down hallways. So sophomore, I'm a sophomore pregnant. Yay. In um. Yeah, walking down the hallways. The funny thing is, um, like I said, you wouldn't expect I was pregnant. So I was in the bathroom at North, and I was in one of the stalls, and sir, some couple girls were washing their hands, discussing that they had heard someone was pregnant and trying to figure out who it was. You're in the bathroom. And I'm in the bathroom. And I'm just listening to them <laughs> and think, try and come up with what girl they heard was pregnant is pregnant. And you would not be one of them. That I, they would I, I would bet you a million dollars that they never came up with my name. Never. Wow. I would love to go back and ask some ask North him. people, what did you, what were your initial thoughts when you found out it was Stacy Fish? He's a bad dude. No, <laughs> I'm telling you, it's got to be. It takes two. <laughs> it does? It does. It's wild. That's the next show. Yeah. So what else? Walking through, I mean, you know, so you had me junior year, December so, junior year. So Some North High stories yeah. um, were. Big belly. I mean, big you, belly. Could you even fit in desks? Yes, like well, I was only when I, I was a hundred pounds when I got pregnant, and right away I dropped six, so I was ninety four pounds and pregnant, five foot, tiny. I was an NC, and so I had you at one hundred and thirty pounds. I just was always little at that point, and so walk north was interesting. Um, like I didn't really have any enemies, so that part wasn't scary. For the most part, I don't like confrontation. I was pretty nice, and so I didn't have people be mean to me, um, that, or at least in my face. I didn't yeah. have people be mean to me. But some people would walk up to me, and they, and when they say hi to me, they never they stop looking at my face. They look straight down at my belly. And that was, I always wanted to say, hi, I'm up here. I'm up here, and have them look it's in my shock eyes. shock and awe of you having a, yes. a pregnant belly. And then one day I was in, um, I think, science class, and thank the Lord. The Lord cares about all little things, I think, but we still have life, so things happen. Mm -hmm. 
that day I happened to be wearing a silk shirt and um, I didn't have older sisters that were pregnant. I, you know, my mom was, it was 16 years ago. She probably didn't think about it. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting in class and I look down and my milk obviously <laughs> had started to leak and on my shirt is wet in class, no. high school. <laughs> Pregnant. Your science. <laughs> yes. And so thank the Lord. It was silk. And I, I was literally able just to wipe it and it was gone and you couldn't see it. And then I, once I went to the bathroom, I fixed it. But um, that was always like, that was wow. always like, wow. And then another crazy story is health class. You know, you have, I don't even know if they have health class anymore, but back then you, they did. And they had a section on teen pregnancy. So the health um, teacher came up to me one day and said, you might not want to come to class um, today. Um, I'm talking about teen pregnancy, and I'm pretty hard on it. And so he put my chair out in the hallway, <laughs> and I had to sit in the hallway, which is weird because that's what yeah, that's back what, then. That's what more punishment. They, well, that's what they did back then. I don't know if they do it now. They threw they threw your your desk out in the hallway, and you had to sit there if you were in trouble or bad. Yeah. So I had to sit there, and as they proceeded to talk about teen pregnancy, while I was in the hallway, they didn't want you to talk on. Life experience. I guess not. Yeah, he, <laughs> he didn't want to see me crying. <laughs> That'd have been tough to go through. Was dad going to church? Was dad not going to church? Well, was he still going to church? I, we were still going to church, but um, my parents had a rule growing up that if they if we dated someone and they didn't have a, a church that they attended, that in order to date us for that week or to go out with us that week, they had to go to church with us on Sunday. So Raul was our, you know, he would be going to church with that was just kind of normal that he had to go to church with us. So he continued to go to church. Any discussions with Momo and Papa about, you know, maybe dad not being a Christian or you know, like a, as a parent, like that's one of my things I pray for, you know, my daughters. And right. when I was obviously in high school and middle school, that was conversations me and you and dad had all the time was, you know, make sure someone you date yeah. is a Christian, Christian. And if they're mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. and they begin to just go to church with you, they're not changing for the right reasons. They need to have a personal relationship with Jesus. And mm -hmm. so, you know, knowing what you've taught me and instilled in my life and to think back that <laughs> all those things didn't happen necessarily when you were in high school, you know, it's like, man, I can't imagine some of those conversations. I, I don't know that they, we, I don't really remember conversations about that. I think um, knowing my mom and dad, they were obviously in prayer for him. Sure. Like I said, I had a, a relationship with Christ. And so me and Raul had those conversations and I think he was open to them. So Do you remember any of it them, was what okay. they sounded like or felt like? Or? Um, Raul had a hard time trusting in Jesus as his father yep. because of his father figures on this earth. Um, and so that was probably the hardest thing. And then he felt like there were things in the Bible that he that were contradictory or that didn't make sense or that were one way in this scripture and one way the next scripture. So he had lots of questions on that, but he was still open to it. It wasn't like he was a hardened heart. So he would um, t ask me, he would ask my dad, he would even go to a Bible study with my dad and his friends and ask them questions. Paul and, Paul's friends. Yeah, Papa's friends and try and stump them. Like he would go in and say, hey, this is what the Bible says. And then it says this over here. And what he remembers of that is that they would give them the answer, but if they didn't know it, they just said, you know what, we're going to research it. We're going to look into it. We're going to we'll study back. this. And mm -hmm. then the next Bible study, they would come back with an answer. And so I guess having those godly Christian men come around him yeah. and love him and um, encourage the questions, encourage all that, I think helped him grow closer to Christ. I always tell the students that like sometimes the church gets it and Christians are scared of doubt and questioning just like that. Mm -hmm. It's like if your doubt and your questioning leads to answers, then there's no issue. That, right. That's actually what God is asking you to do is right. you know, seek out and find out for yourself. Yeah. So it's one thing to doubt. And then, like you said, be closed off to that. Like the Bible doesn't yeah. say that and that doesn't line up. So forget the Bible and forget God and church. And, mm -hmm. But instead to lean in and to dive into it, you actually end up finding answers and questions. And that leads to you know the truth of who God is, which then mm -hmm. obviously allowed dad to know Jesus today because of that. Well, I think that's pro pro probably mm -hmm. why he's a strong leader of our home, spiritual head of our home, because he didn't just say, okay, I'm going to just have a relationship with Christ, say a prayer and move on. He actually studied. He actually dove in 
to find out for himself, not right. just my girlfriend told not me this. Not just because to date you. Yes. Yeah. He actually, he started developing that relationship with Christ by diving in and learning the, the word. But high school, go back to high school. There yeah. was a lot in high school. I mean, I, I was a cheerleader. I was on student council. I worked at Orange Julius. So I had to l- go to all of those people individually and sit down and tell them I was pregnant. And that was hard. What were some of those initial responses? Do you remember? Um, well, at my, least what you felt like? Yeah. My cheerleading coach um, was actually a Christian. And I don't know that I knew that. And um, so I had to sit down. I remember sitting in her little, she was like part of the home ec. I don't even know if they have that now. The home ec department. And she, I remember sitting around and telling her, and I thought I was going to get kicked off the cheerleading team, all that. And the love of Christ just came through her and she loved me. And she said, you don't have to stop being a cheerleader. You just won't cheer your, <laughs> yeah. your fall year because you'll be pregnant. You but I was, st- but I still, throws. it was a class period in, back then. So it was the, your last class period of the day was or your cheerleading class period. She still let me stay on and do that. And then next year I had to try out again and made it varsity football cheerleader again. So that all worked out. Student council. They couldn't kick me out because I'm pregnant. So I um, they were I was elected. So I got to still serve in student council and then made it again the next year. Or I had to sit down and let them know because all of a sudden I was going to have be out the mall yeah. and pregnant and a teen. And um, once again, our bosses just loved me and just said, yeah, you're pregnant and we'll deal with it. And um, I think the Lord gives you favor and walks before you. And prepares their hearts. So yeah, it's like all those people that were already in place prior to teen, you getting pregnant. Right. That God ordained all those steps and all those places and had you at a place where, not that He caused this to happen, right. but because it happened because of your guys' mistake, there was already a safety net and protection yeah. and blessing around you because of that. Yeah, well, it's just funny. I it, it's I it brings up a lot of emotion when I talk about it, I and see it. I get a little shaky and nervous just because of it. But at the same time, it's almost like a not my story because we've had a, a blessed life. And even though it was hard and it was very hard, it's almost not real. It's almost like it really didn't happen. I really didn't do that. And because of me going to North and um, being a teen mom, there were teen pregnancy programs started. And people had different thinking on that. Um, all of a sudden people... Um, were pregnant and going to school. And so a lot of people were saying, um, well, because Stacy did it, now everyone thinks it's cool and now we're going to be pregnant. So some people felt like I caused all these teen moms mm-hmm. now being pregnant. And then others would say, no, they were already going to be pregnant. They were just aborting. They were dropping out of school. Well, now they saw Stacy walk through the hallways, Stacy do it. So now we maybe don't have to abort. Yeah. Maybe we still can stay in high school. And then, so because of that, um, the counselors created a teen mom, um, group and that would meet and they would have like a, you know, support group. Yep. Um, they created a daycare program and busing them to and from school. Um, I didn't take part of that program just because I had my mom stayed home with you, so I didn't have to, but they would pick you up at your house, me and you, they would have picked me and you up at my house. We would have taken you to a daycare, dropped you off, and then taken me to high school. That all came about after I started going to high school pregnancy. Basically brought awareness to this, it did. this it, issue. Yes, that right. You can still go to high school. You can still go to you high school. You can still get your diploma. I mean, you can still do all that. You right. don't have to just drop out right. or abort. Or abort. Or and I think that's what most people were doing is they were aborting. And um, I wasn't causing them to think it's cool to be pregnant, so let's go get pregnant. I think the Lord allowed yeah. it so I could say, hey, we, you can do this. You can walk through this yeah. and you can make it. So talk about that a little bit. So what what was the life? Uh, have the baby? What's that? What's well, that look like? Well, um, you would have thought we planned it because I had the baby over Christmas break. And um, that was funny because um, I'm 16 and I'm pregnant, almost 17. And um, so my off of school. my older sister's um, boyfriend was there and I started having contractions and he and I wasn't ready. So I was trying to get ready and he's following me around with a 
watch timing my contractions and he was a funny guy <laughs> he was he was made us laugh all the time anyway so i'm trying to get ready and he's running around the house trying timing my contractions and mama's thinking all these kids are going to be at the um, hospital so she's trying to make brownies <laughs> oh, and I, we didn't know this, but I went quick. I went quick. So so, so instead of getting you ready to get out the yes. door, she's worried about brownies. She's making brownies that for everyone. Literally to, makes perfect sense. Yeah, to, for the friends that are going to come. Yeah. And then so we get to the ho- the hospital. Brownies are probably fired, too. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they ever got made because I went uh, quick. They, so we ended up to um, at the hospital and Raul met us there. And as soon as I saw him, I just broke down and started crying. So we go up, we're having, um, I'm in labor, and there are my, our family's all up there, and friends, because we're high schoolers, yeah. having a party. In they, the hallway? Oh, so much, they're so loud that they actually got in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a hotel room. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. And so um, my I, when I got there, it was eight centimeters, and so um, I couldn't, back then, they didn't give you an epidural then. They thought it slowed it down. Now, come to hear from my nursing friends, they said, or they just wanted you to feel the pain because you're a teen mom mm-hmm. and they didn't want you to do it again. So I don't know. Little but life lesson. Yes. So I w- had you without any pain medication. So 130 pounds and I was nine one. Nine pounds one. And you were what they call sunny side up. So not, not flipped, but Favorite just- way to have eggs. Yeah. So I totally had to go in all these different positions. Granted, I'm 16. My boyfriend's there, and he's 17, and I'm out there putting me all these different positions. You did and, all the breathing? Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. <sighs> Something else happened that I didn't realize happened when you were pregnant and having a baby. It? Nope, nope. And I looked at my, I looked at Ro, and I said, if you tell anyone, I tell you, you are good. You better not tell a single. Our millions soul. of listeners are going to want to know now. No, later on, I'm talking years later. I think on Oprah. I'm just going to tell them. No, on Oprah. What, what do you mean? No, you have Oprah, to, they're going to wonder what's going on or what you're talking about. On Oprah, I discovered it was normal. And I'm like, years later, I'm like, oh, Mom, you see, have to tell them. that was normal. No, not. They're going to wonder what it was. They'll wonder. So what else? So I had the baby, then what? Now what do you do? I mean, you guys move in together? You no, I stayed. I stayed. We both lived where we were. Raul put a crib in his bedroom. So his friends would come in and there would be this <laughs> crib and they would, you know, got to laugh about it and stuff. And so I had um, you during the um, during the week and he had you on the weekends. And... Um, when we first came home, the first few days, um, you had the hiccups. Yeah, I was. I was going to ask this. Yeah, you you had the hiccups, and we didn't know what to do. And so Rose, um, Grandma Ruth, said, "Oh, you just get a um, red piece of string and wet it, and put it on his forehead, and that'll stop the hiccups." <laughs> oh, a oh, red piece of string. Yes, yes. Just laid on the forehead. And we have it's crazy. There was other like areas that we didn't have boys mean we didn't, my mom didn't have boys we didn't have brothers so we didn't quite know how to take care of <laughs> and i just remember one of my mom's friends that had boys came and said oh you got to be doing this and she showed us and we're like oh really that's good to know i was yeah. a test child yeah makes me feel confident so then on wednesdays my mom had a bible study and so every wednesday rose mom linda um watched you and then on the weekends you you were at his house and we went to school. We came home. He had football practice. I worked at Orange Julius. Um, so in the meantime, I was mama and papa. Mama papa um, took care of you during the day, and which this is I think about this now. Mom gave up. I mean, she stayed at home, but all of a sudden, she had a baby to take care of all day long, and um, you know, I I thanked her, but it took me being a mimi. I wish she was still alive today because I think there's something about saying thank you and your gratitude when you've when walked you it to, yeah. and you've experienced it. Yeah. And so I so wish I could really say, wow, mom, you gave up so much for me to continue in school and do all that stuff that yeah. it's hard to have your, the you love your grandkids, but it's work. I mean, you're exhausted on Wednesdays when I have my girls, <laughs> I'm exhausted when I come home. Or all weekend. And yeah. I think, wow, she did that for a year and a half. Just no problem. Selfishly, she did that. And I would love to be able to go back to her now and say, I get it. Yeah, now that you've been there. I get it. Yeah. 
I've walked it and I understand the sacrifice that you made for me and Tyler to continue in, in school. So it's kind of those things you wish. I mean, I know I thanked her, but not yeah. that sincere. I know what you, what you had to do. What, uh, what, what were some struggles through that whole process? I mean, maybe not just right away, but you know, as I become one and one and a half, yeah, you didn't sleep very well at night. Um, and it's ironic because now I sleep amazing. Yeah, you didn't sleep very night, so that was hard because then I had to get up and go to to school. So um, getting you to sleep or sleep through the night, and then have to wake up and go to school that was that was yeah. hard. On the video version of this podcast, we'll throw up that I was in you guys' senior pictures. Yep, and <laughs> you were in the senior pictures, and um, <laughs> and you went to football games. Papa and Mama took you to the football games and track meets and. I just remember when you were, I mean, you were just a little over a year, year and a half, and you would watch um, your dad run the races, and you figured out how you have to kneel down, put your hand down to take off. Mm -hmm. at, uh, I mean, blocks. Oh, I mean, a little than Eliza, and you would do that on the starting blocks and take off running, so that, it was when, cool. So, so you talk about, you know, saying thank you to mom when you've been through it now that I have kids and to think you guys did all of that at 16, 17 is wild. Have you looked at our pictures of in the hospital? We were kids. Yes. Yeah. I mean, Eliza's, you know, almost a year and a half and to think to be a senior in high school to be mm -hmm. going to class and still have a child at that age and to go to, you know, thinking back when I played football in high school and to, to think that I finished that game and then have to go home and, take care of a kid is, is like mind boggling. Yeah, it is. But you came even talk about mama. I mean, papa. but I was like a perfect child. So, it, you know, life is, you easier. weren't a perfect child, but you brought joy in a time. Mama, and papa, mama and papa were going through maybe not the hardest time in their life, but one of the hardest times in their life. Through that, through that, during through, that time. During that time. And not because of me being pregnant, obviously that added to it, but that was a whole nother piece of what they were walking through at that time. And um, you actually brought them so much joy. And they will t they would tell you that you helped get them through that very hard time. My dad was um, not so hands on dad, he always provided for us, he had a relationship with us. I don't mean that he was there. True. Um, but he wasn't very hands on he was the typical, I provide the income I work and um, I don't do the diapers. I don't do all that. That kind of comes from that generation, right? Anyways, right. I mean that's kind of how it was back then. Back then, but when you came along, he would take like he worked from home and he always had errands to run to go to the post office, the bank, all this stuff. And he that was his thing. What he did with you, he would take you with him during the day to help mom. Um, he would run. You would run errands with him. You would mow the lawn with him, which you shouldn't do, but yeah. he would put you on the riding lawn more and. Um, that wasn't typical for him to do that. And so you actually brought them a lot of joy and happiness. And it's it's kind of like, what's awesome about that moment? Yeah. You ask me? So you have, you I do have, have a lot of awesome moments. You do moment. have a wah, wah, wah. Wah, 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 yeah, yeah. So you, even though it was that situation was a hard situation, what's awesome about that? One thing that came out of that is that you gave them hope and joy and um a purpose at that time in their life and help them get through that. Okay. So now you got a kid, uh, you know, heard a little bit about the struggles went marriage conversation and then, uh, that won't close us out. Okay. So, um, beginning of our, um, senior year, it was in September. Um, we're kids, <laughs> so I didn't expect it, but, um, this is literally how your dad asked me. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't get the. Uh, <laughs> I mean, did you talk about marriage? No, because I, you, you have know, a kid, you're going to get married. I don't know that we actually talked talked about it. I think at that point we knew that that probably was going to happen. You know that yep. that was going to yep. be what we did after. Just we, because of the kid, or you guys actually loved each other? Actually loved each other. Yeah. Actually, I I, I don't know that either one of us, whether your dad admits it or not, either one of us could think about life without each other. Okay. I mean, it, we He's, he said that before. We weren't getting married because of you. Yeah. Does that make sense? We were. Well, I mean, it's kind of sad. But... We were getting married earlier yeah. than we would have. Sure. Because of you, 
Yeah. But we weren't getting married because it of just you. spread the process. Out. We absolutely loved each other. That's who we wanted to be with. Gotcha. So, so I'm, I'm at his couple. house, okay. just a normal day <laughs> during the week, and I'm there. You're there, and um, his sisters and brothers are there, which are young. <laughs> It'd be like Valencia, Valencia, yeah. and they're like, "Come on, ask her, ask her, ask her." And so, in the midst of his living room, they're saying, "Ask her." Oh yeah, they're all right around. <laughs> He brings a shoebox out, and inside the shoebox, the Nike shoebox, the orange ones. I don't know. (laughs) In the shoebox is my ring, and so I'm hoping to. He asked me to marry him. You get on one knee at least. No, I don't. No. Oh man. Oh man. (laughs) He made up for it years later on our 15. I mean, he was only 17 though. He yeah, he was wild. Yeah. Yeah. Or eight? Was he 18 by then? No, he was uh, 17. 17. Almost 18. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. So I just want to say, you know, personally, thank you, obviously, for choosing life. Thank you for um, blazing a trail, you know, going up against statistics, odds stacked up against you, you know, by, I mean, there's just so many things that were against you, teen pregnancy, um, you know, dad coming from a broken home, you know, interracial relationship. Um, That was a challenge too. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, just... There's just so much you can't even really even get into. Not only chose life, but then decided to still, you know, you got your bachelor's in child development and family science. Dad got his bachelor's, master's, PhD. Um, and I think, you know, you said it that sometimes when we tell the story and think about it, it almost doesn't seem, it doesn't seem real. You know, to think that, to, you know, when people hear this story or when I tell them, it, it it's just, it's mind boggling. It's shocking to think that. You, you hear so many of these stories that don't turn out like this. And, and, you know, for us, it's, it's giving God glory and giving God praise, um, that, that he pulled you guys through this. But at the same time, sometimes we don't take credit. And I think we need to take some credit that you guys did make hard decisions that you guys did, you know, continue your work ethic. It wasn't like you just prayed and then hoped God would miraculously show up. You know, you guys still went to orange Julius, you, you know, dad still worked in the, Roos Casino and opened up and, you know, still went to school, still got good grades, still got to college, mm-hmm. you know, and, and then the college whole life, that could be a whole nother episode of undergrad with a kid and master's program with a kid. Um, but the real reason it all worked out and we are a statistic is truly because we repented and turned to Christ. Yeah, we did. It didn't pull us away. It pulled us toward, and you lean to God in the midst of your to, failure and in yes. your mistakes. And, and through that, He walked with us through this, and that's why it seems like really not my story because He sheltered me, He covered me, and even though I had to walk through it, He literally walked with me through it. Well, yeah, because it's one thing in the midst of making a mistake just to say, "God, for, you know, forgive me of my sins," or "I can't believe I did that," or mm-hmm. you know, make it right, but. But a year or two later to still say that, you know, that God, I need you every single day. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that's, you know, obviously we give all the credit to your relationship with Jesus. And And taking what the Lord will take what is bad and turn it into good. Yeah, because God didn't Mm -hmm. cause you to get pregnant. God doesn't cause bad stuff. Right. That was my mistake. That was our mistake. We did that. When you you make a mistake, God can use your mistake and your failure. (laughs) Obviously, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Look at this. Sweet. And how cool is that? If I hadn't had you and we hadn't turned back to Christ, many youth in Sioux City and Montezuma and in this world wouldn't know Christ because now you are ministering to others. Yep. And that's amazing. Like, wow, we chose life and now you are actually presenting life to youth around this world through Christ. It's Full circle. It is. It's awesome. We have a segment on this show, Mom, that we call Manage Your Mentals. Marshawn Lynch says it best. Go take care of your mentals. Go take care of your mentals. Do you have an action step, maybe a takeaway, an encouragement for the people today? You know, like in the midst of your story, what you've learned. Is there a Manage Your Mentals moment that you can, you can leave us with today? Manage Your Mentals would be you have to invite Christ in and ask him to take over in our failures and in our mistakes and to walk with us. And if we do that, 
He will give you that peace, that joy, that sound mind. Mm -hmm. Your mentals will be sound if you truly give him first place in everything that you do in your life. He will manage your mentals. I love it. You might replace dad on a weekly basis. <laughs> might have upgraded him. I mean, let's go. Before we leave and you continue with your morning, afternoon, or evening, we just want to remind you that there's two times to be great when you feel like it and when you don't. Tune in next time. Unfortunately, you're not going to be on the show. Dr. Sanchez will be back and we're going to talk about removing the stigma of mental health. He's going to talk about the physical health and mental health cycle, what that looks like and how closely they are related. He's going to talk a little bit about the effects of protein on the brain, inflammation, and what actually happens in the mental health aspect when your physical health is not functioning properly. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, give us a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and ring that bell. And then this week specifically, if you have any questions or comments or you would like to dive in a little deeper on what we're talking about, any questions regarding to what happened in the during labor, we will answer those oh, in the won't. comments below. <laughs> we, won't. we will and we love you. Don't forget to renew your perspective, move towards uncertainty and find what's possible with that in every situation. We love y'all. I had to realize what's inside of me For all of the people that lied to me For all of the people that said I would fall off Oh, but what a time to be alive I wrote this for everyone, feel like they counted out You need to look in the mirror and tell yourself It's time to be who I am now Greatness